Welcome to Your Source TV from the nation's capital. I'm Tamara Stuchla, and in this segment, we explore pain medicine with Dr. Carol McMakin and her pioneering work with frequency-specific microcurrent. Your Source TV empowers with new approaches, encourages to think outside the box, and inspires to look beyond. Dr. Carroll, thank you so much for being with us. Let's jump right in about this incredible work that you've been doing since 1996, and you've pioneered microcurrent at these very small frequencies. Let's start the story. Okay, hi Tamara, it's nice to see you again. Um, I started frequency-specific microcurrent in 1995 and 96, and I started teaching it in 97 to find out if it was reproducible. I got the frequencies from a chiropractor who had worked with an osteopath from England who bought a practice in Canada in 1946 that came with a machine that was made in 1922. So back to the 1920s, they were using frequencies for Therapy, medicine. For medicine. There were thousands of doctors in the Viruses U.S. Viruses and all sorts of things. All sorts of things. So there are thousands of doctors in the U.S. using electromagnetic therapies between 1910 and 1934. <clears throat> In 1934, the American Medical Association in the person of Maurice Fishbein decreed that drugs and surgery were going to be the tools of medicine and that electromagnetic therapies were unscientific. So ultimately between 1934 and 1950 or so, the use of the equipment died out. The machines were... So that's were, why people say, I've never heard of this before. No. And the machines were, were big old things. They plugged into the wall back when DC current, what we use now with batteries, was plug in the wall. It was a different kind of wall current. So they used these big old machines and this machine that Harry Van Gelder bought plugged in the wall. It came with a list of frequencies. He used them between 1946 when he bought this practice and probably 1985 or 90 when he retired and moved back to Australia. We got, I got the list of frequencies from somebody that had worked with him. And the Frequencies are set up so that there's a frequency to remove a path pathology, like inflammation is a pathology. It's not normal for tissue to be inflamed. Scar tissue is a pathology. Toxicity is a pathology. Disease, anything that the body's... Viruses, emotional upset. There are frequencies to remove those, and there are frequencies for specific tissues. So there's a frequency for the nerve, for the muscle for your small intestine, for your brain. So there are frequency combinations that we put together to treat irritable bowel syndrome. So you had a basis for this, but you've done pioneering work since... All I got was a list and the logic. The logic was you remove the pathologies from the tissue and you see what happens. And what happens is that when we use the frequency to take the pathology out of the tissue, the tissue goes back to normal function. So nerve pain goes down. Irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, the inflammation goes away and the patient who's been symptomatic for 17 years gets up off the table with no abdominal pain and normal bowel function for the first time in years. So clinically, I started with a list of frequencies. The first thing we treated was muscle pain, trigger points, myofascial trigger points, knots in muscles that are painful. That's the first thing I treated, and it worked so well, it's like, oh my goodness, I wonder. So that was 96, 97, I started teaching it to find out if it was reproducible. And you also lectured at NIH. And I lectured at NIH in, in 2000, and started. I lectured at the Institute for Functional Medicine in 2000, and by then we had three years of experience and hundreds of practitioners around the country so we knew it was reproducible. And showing cell changes. The cellular changes we didn't get until after I lectured at NIH. So in 1999, there's a kind of fibromyalgia that comes from spine trauma. They get whiplash injuries or lifting injuries and they have full body pain with burning in the hands and feet, abnormal reflexes. 1999, I treated 25 of these patients. Our results were they came in with their pain between a 6 and a 10, and they left between a 0 and a 2. So a 7.3 to a 1.3 on a 
10 scale. So I presented these 25 cases at NIH because this condition is untreatable. You can't treat fibromyalgia from spine trauma. There's no way to treat the pain. Narcotics don't work. Drugs don't work. It's not, it's not treatable. So I gave this lecture, and that's where I met Terry Phillips. He's an immunochemist. And at the end of the lecture, I said, this is what we've done. I've done it 25 times. It works every time. But nobody's going to believe it unless we get objective data. So Terry came up and said, you send me a spot of blood on blotter paper, and I'll, I'll tell you what's changing. So we got the data back, and that's where we found out what the cells and the spinal cord were doing. Because and <coughs> this is revolutionary work within the, the wellness holistic field to have uh, verifiable oh, oh. cell change. Uh, so you're pioneering in that, uh, that arena as well. Absolutely. It's like the doors that needed to open, opened. I was just in the right place at the right time and was very fortunate. So we, the pioneering work was the fact that these patients would get out of pain. The data was what we needed to have the medical community pay attention to it. When we got the data back from Terry Phillips, inflammatory cytokines, it's a big word, they're chemicals, they're proteins in the body that create inflammation. So when your joint turns all this red and swollen. This is the natural inflammation response, what the medical community knows is happening. Right. And these chemicals are in your body when your body gets inflamed. And normally, they're very hard to change. I found this out afterwards. They're very hard to change. Chronic they're, conditions are all inflammation-based. Right. Chronic all conditions. Of them. Yep, absolutely. And the cytokines, the chemicals that create inflammation, are difficult to change. Well, when we got the data back from Dr. Phillips, what we found out was that the inflammatory cytokines start out at 10 to 20 times normal in these patients, and they drop at a logarithmic rate by factors of 10 and 20 times in 90 minutes. So when I called one of the medical professors at um, GW and asked him what this meant, it was like somebody hung up the phone. I said, Dr. Ruff, are, are you there? He said, cytokines are hard to change. And I said, no, they're not. They all change like that in 90 minutes. He said, that's not possible. I said, yeah, it is, because we just did it. So inflammation goes down, and we have data to show it. And we followed that up with animal research at the University of Sydney in Australia in mice. They paint a chemical on the mouse's ears that makes the, the ears swell up, and then they measure how much swelling there is. So we use the frequency to treat the inflammation in the mouse's ear. Again, scientific. Yep. It's nice to do it in clinic, because if you came in with nerve pain, all I care about is giving, getting the you result. out of pain. But in order to have research. other physicians pay attention to it, you have to have research. So University of Sydney, they paint this stuff in the mouse's ears, they measure the swelling, then they treat the mice with this frequency to reduce inflammation in the immune system. And the swelling in the mouse's ear went down by, well, it actually went down the first time by 70%. And the researcher that was conducting this study called a halt because she'd never tested a drug in 20 years of doing this that had reduced inflammation by more than 45%. This is remarkable. Yeah. So this with, is about what time frame? This was 2003. So three years after the NIH data came out, we knew that we could reduce inflammation, but we needed confirmation in a double blind animal, or a blinded animal model. So she blinded everybody in the lab. They repeated the study. And the swelling went down in the mouse's ears by 62% in four minutes. At two minutes, it was reduced by 30%. At four minutes, it was reduced by 60%. It's never been seen. The um, implications of that are that it's, it's a time-dependent response, which means that there's a process going on that starts and proceeds at a certain rate and then stops. So it's... Um, Does it suggest it, multiple treatments or the data is the data? The data is the data. It's 62% in four minutes in, um, in a different kind of inflammation. They, so they did a different study. Different frequencies? No, same frequency, but a different kind of inflammation that follows a different pathway. They 
reduced, the frequency to reduce inflammation reduced inflammation by 30%, which I thought was disappointing. And then she pointed out that that was equivalent to an injectable anti-inflammatory drug that they use after surgery. She's never seen anything like it. So it was extraordinary. Then there's another experiment where they sunburn the mice and that suppresses the immune system. Then they treated the mice and the mice that were treated immediately didn't have much reduction in swelling. You know how when you get a sunburn you get swollen and puffy? Yes. They treated them immediately, not a lot of reduction in swelling. They treated them at two hours after the sunburn and it brought the swelling down by about 25%, which was significant. But they painted a chemical on the mouse's leg that the mouse will develop a swelling in response when they, the next time they get exposed to that chemical. Does that make sense? So you, it's kind of like a bee sting. Yes. Like you get stung by the bee and then the next time you get stung by the bee, your whole arm swells up. Same thing with the mice. Paint this stuff on their foot and two weeks later you paint it on their ears and their ears swells up. Well, if you get a sunburn, it suppresses your immune system. The microcurrent rever reversed the immune system suppression by half. So the sunburn suppressed the immune response by 63%. The group that was treated immediately with microcurrent, their immune system res response was only suppressed 30%. So it reduced it by half, okay? The important part about that was that it was one exposure to a frequency that produced a permanent change in the immune system because the challenge took, took place two weeks after the original microcurrent application. It's kind of a complicated story, but do you see what I'm saying? Yes, to, and to get that permanent change because that's what people are interested in. Yes, yes. Whether it's conventional medicine or new technologies, they want to say, what's the bottom line? Mm -hmm. So that's, to me, that's the, the really the most important thing to come out of the animal research was, yes, the frequency to reduce inflammation reduces inflammation better than any drug that's ever been tested in this animal model. But the, the sleeper, the most powerful data that we got out of the Australian study was that a frequency applied at the time of the sunburn reduced immune system suppression by half two weeks after a single four-minute application. That's huge. I'm speechless. <laughs> and Welcome to my world. <laughs> Dr. Carroll, what we're going to do is we're going to go to break, and when we come back, you're going to be providing a demonstration for us with, uh, you have multiple yes. uh, pieces of equipment that Good. you've developed over the years, mm -hmm. and we're going to learn more. Good. Russia Today TV, where Russian and American businesses come together. To be listed on Russia Today's Business Connection, go to RussiaTodayTV.com. Olga Shamoff is an internationally acclaimed artist. You can see a virtual gallery tour at VladiArts.com. Welcome back to Your Source TV. We're here with Dr. Carol, chiropractor, who is demonstrating frequency specific microcurrent. Dr. Carol. Tamara. So we use graphite gloves. They're conductive, so they conduct the current. They're a little bit wet, so you have to have a little bit of water so they conduct. So um, you've trained thousands of physicians and chiropractors and other holistic... MDs, about 30% of our practitioners are MDs, chiropractors, um, another 30% naturopaths, acupuncturists, anybody who has the ability to use electrical stim as part of their license. So I've been doing seminars since 1997. We went national in 2003. We do nine seminars a year around the U.S. And, and internationally. And internationally. We do one in Australia, one in Ireland. I'll do one in London this year, and we're going to Europe um, in two years. So um, I just, when I teach people FSM or frequency specific microcurrent, I teach them a language. I teach them frequencies for this and that, and then they fit that into their practice. So we have an internist in New England that treats irritable bowel and asthma and bronchitis and a neurologist in Durango that treats brain injuries and chiropractor in San Francisco that treats football players and sports injuries 
and an OBGYN in Detroit that treats genital herpes and stops postpartum bleeding and treats endometriosis and vaginal scar tissue. So the frequencies work for any number of things, take a pathology out of a tissue. So I teach them a language in three days, but every practitioner the patient will see will use that language differently. Okay. And you also developed this equipment and you have five separate different kinds of machines. This, this precision microcurrent was the first one and I didn't develop it. It was already on the market. It was the one that gave us the idea because it had two channels just like remember that old machine that was from the 1920s? It had two channels just like that So machine. there's a world of microcurrent out there but beyond this model you've taken these four other models and right really innovated. Yes, they were very fortunate to find a manufacturer that would make, this is the auto care, that's the custom care. Um, this one can be programmed from a computer and lists sequences, trans um, uses sequences of frequencies so it moves from one frequency to another to another. So if you're treating irritable bowel, you have to treat the bowel for inflammation and histamine and allergies and toxicity. If you're treating the liver, so your doctor programs this, works with you directly, right. and you have this unit at home. Right, exactly. Or the doctor can use that in the office. The auto care, the doctor um, just gets the auto care. I've already programmed it. There's 83 programs. It can't be changed beyond what I put in it three years ago. And um, it just makes it more efficient to do some of the standard programs in the office. So back pain disc injuries, nerve pain, cervical trauma, fibro, sh herpes, shingles, liver toxicity, those protocols are pretty set. You, I don't even have to be there for them to work. That's the thing. This is not a placebo effect. It's not because I'm a nice guy and I have magic hands. It's because the frequencies actually do what they're alleged to do. Um, so this so unit doesn't require uh, the, the gloves? It, they don't, no. The doctor doesn't have to wear the gloves. He can, but he doesn't have to. The auto care is the same thing. The doctor could just take the glove and tuck it in your waistband and put this one behind your neck and turn the program on that you need and come back in 35 minutes. There's a skin anti-aging program that firms up the, it increases collagen and elastin making the skin tighter. So, I mean, I have, I'm in my 60s. So I've got kind of, you know, you know, the loose skin here. I treated myself two days ago because I wanted it to be a little tighter, so I, right? And I can't grab anything. I used, three days ago, I could grab two, three inches of skin here, and it's all tight. So you do treatments twice a week for three weeks, and it's definitely- With these home-, home With the home units. I, this is my custom care. It's programmed for me. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I'm, you asked me if I treat.